Hello, hello, hello. I'm Kendra. I love to watch and welcome to a very special episode of the weekly watch list. Today I'm going to be sitting down with my sister Kenya and we're going to be reviewing The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, Season 1. Let's get into it. Hey now, I'm Kenya. Yo, I'm Kendra. We're, We're twins. twins. We, we love, love to watch. watch. And this, this is our review of The Walking, Walking Dead, Dead, The Ones Who Live. Yay! Welcome back to the channel, Kenya. This is my sister, huge Rashawn fan, just like me. Yeah, well, I'm a Walking Dead fan, but definitely a And I'm a Walking fan. Dead fan. She's actually the one who introduced me to The Walking Dead. If it weren't for her, I probably wouldn't have watched it. Hey. So I'm glad that I did. I discovered my love for Rick Grimes and then later, my love for Michonne and then later, my love for Michonne. Um, so we're going to talk about this season one of The Ones Who Live. God damn. It's really good. It was so good. So, good. so, so good. We're going to talk about our favorite episodes. We're going to rank the episodes. We're going to talk about our best moments, our least favorite things that maybe we wish had happened or didn't happen the way it happened. Yeah. We're going to talk about Scott Gimple, Denai, and Andrew and their amazing job producing and writing this season. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to give this season one, manifesting, manifesting, um, uh, an overall review of what we thought about it and how they handled the whole thing. So very, very excited. I just want to say that I was going to over prepare for this. I was going to make all these notes. I was going to, you know, type up all these theories and I was going to expand on themes and symbolism and, you know, the character arcs and all of that. But I decided not to do that because we will be here all day. And I don't want to get into this shit. Right. Walking Dead fans at large, most of them are Rick Grimes fans, but then some of them just cannot get on board with his love for Michonne. Uh, but Rashawn fans, like y'all get it. Um, and I have seen some really great takes, some really in-depth analysis and just breaking down deep dive, um, going into fandom lore, just a lot of really good discourse. So I'm going to shout out somebody specific. This person is called Starfruit Green. That's Starfruit Dash Green. Um, they have really good analysis of the symbolism and the sort of themes of fascism and everything that CRM represents. Rick's struggle against that and Michonne's role in pulling himself from it. And I just really feel like their breakdowns of what's going on in this um, TV show is really worth reading through. So I just wanted to say that. That's what we're here to talk about, man. We're here to talk about this series that has caused so much friggin' buzz among the Walking Dead fan base. Even non fans. Worse, or, yeah, even pulling non, -fans. non fans into it. People who have never like, watched the show. I don't know what the fuck this is, but I'm into it. You see so many people like, I don't even go here, or I don't even watch the show, or I stop watching the show, and but this 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 has brought them. Yeah, a lot of people have sworn that they wouldn't watch uh, The Walking Dead ever again, but for whatever reason, and we know why, and we'll discuss it later. Um, this season of television has been so good and so riveting and so well done yeah. um, that a lot of people have decided to give The Walking Dead a chance. The ranking of episodes according to us, this is our personal opinion, yeah. um, according to the way that we felt about the what we saw. Tier list in terms of the episodes we got. We only got six, but what's your, what's your ranking? Yeah, I think our ranking is going to be virtually the same so my ranking is my number one episode is episode four I mean I feel like that is every Roshoner's number one episode Denai Guerrero wrote it she show ran it um, she's a award-winning and Tony nominated playwright we have seen both of her plays we saw her so play so here uh, Eclipse off Broadway and on Broadway and we saw the play that had Letitia Wright in it. She is one to be reckoned with and that episode is proof positive of the fact that she really should be 
running shit, I, I'm like an advocate for please have somebody at AMC uh, put that script Give on deadline so that we can work. read that script. So okay. Please share that script. I want to read that please script. Please share that script. All of them. Yeah. So but that one in particular. Yes. Um, my number two episode is actually the pilot. The first episode, number one, it reintroduces us to Rick Grimes. It lets us know exactly what's been going on with him since we last saw him. It is so tightly written and it's so fast paced and action packed. It, it, it just, it does not disappoint. It was the perfect way to bring us back into this world and reintroduce our favorite character to us. And the longest episode, I think. Was it? Yeah, I mean, it didn't feel like it was long. It was just, it, it, there's no such thing as perfection, as I'm going to keep saying throughout this review, but it was the closest to perfect. Um, that in episode four, that I could say. Um, my third ranking is episode six, which is the uh, finale. I think that that is the case for me because oh, of... <laughs> The, the opening sequence, okay, when Rick Grimes let us know let, yet again that he is Mr. Romance, that he is lover boy, that he is baby girl, that he is in love with his wife. And then the ending, uh, the reunion. And we are going to talk about the reunion because um, I have thoughts about that. But like that just... Let, not letting us leave this world, leave Rick and Michonne without seeing them alive, well, and reunited with their children. Like, I'm so happy that they did it. And I'm just, that to me made this whole thing satisfying. So my number four pick is episode three. That is when Rick and Michonne are like fully united, but this beginning of the angst for them, you're starting to see how they are on different pages and there's just a lot going on in that episode too. We yeah. see we see the stage manifest yeah. itself in episode three. Uh, my number five ranking is episode two. That is Michonne's episode. I'm only doing it this way because it's, you, you know, it's just a ranking, but I really feel like it, that episode was very solid. It's the same as episode one. Um, and you get the second half of the reunion and then you get a little bit more. So I feel like the way they did that was just, just perfect the way they did that. And then, or almost perfect. And then my last one is episode five. Now, I do like episode five. I would say it was good. It wasn't great. It was good. I, I think it was uneven. I think the pacing, I think there's more that they could have done with that. They, it was dialogue heavy. Jadis had a lot of dialogue. She got a lot of screen time, just period. But I think some of what she told us, we should have seen. Mm -hmm. um, her hunting them, for example. Yeah, she's it gonna... would have been so much better to, and so much more tense and tight, I think. Yeah, it was lacking tension. Like, I know they were trying to call back to the honeymoon episode yeah, of Say Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand the structure, but I think it might have been a, a little bit of a better structure, yeah. especially after having spent so much time you know, with Rick and Michonne reconciling their love, if in between them having this amazing time on the road in love, we see Jadis uh -huh. hunting them down and, yeah. and tracking them down the way she kind of exposition talked about yeah. it. Yeah. So, let me consult my news. I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah. For me, the, the first and top, tippity, tip top, top is episode four. Uh, Denai Guerrero is, like everyone has been saying, a, an amazing writer. And I think even before the season premiered, people were buzzing about this episode and about how good it was. And about, yeah. the, they, they were already calling it the best episode of the season. Right. So, and, 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 and what we saw only confirmed, you know, that buzz, it was so fucking good. <laughs> From start to finish, when they were in the same room together, it was so thick, that tension, the way that they were like back and forth, Michonne pleading and getting angry and getting more and more frustrated and Rick essentially just so Shut shut down, down yeah. um, because he cannot allow himself to feel all of that love and all of that hurt that and be real he was feeling for years before he decided to give it up. And then, of course, the ending of that is what 
I mean, come on. <laughs> it's the Rashawn love story. Yeah, man. Rashawn pulled him back to himself and they ro rolled off into the sunset and the yellowest goddamn truck on the face of the planet. Number two will be episode one. It was the perfect, perfect opener for this show. I think a lot of people... Um, a lot of people were on board for the Rashawn love story, but even more people were on board to see Rick Grimes return to The Walking Dead. Yeah. And opening the season with him, all the, the whole thing, just him and showing where the fuck he's been for so long. People have been missing him since the day that he left. Yeah, man. Um, like Andrew said, people keep asking him, damn man, uh, we miss you. Where you Because he was back? the show. He like, was the show. Rick Grimes is the walking dead. The show started with him opening his eyes um, in that hospital bed. And it this show starting with him was perfect. And it was so jam-packed, like Kenya said. It was tense from start to finish. You really fell for him. God damn, Andrew Lincoln. What a tour de force <laughs> as an actor. Why doesn't this fucking man have an award? Why have you not awarded him? Get that man the fuck, Hollywood? Episode three was really good because it 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 showed Michonne, who is clearly a force to be reckoned with. She is a fighter. She has always been a fighter. She has always been the person to bring Rick back to himself, whether that is back to his um, husband, father, you know, uh, human self or back to his fighter warrior fight a motherfucker out self or back to his lover self she's always been that north star that anchor for him and then seeing them finally fucking reunited and her in the fucking belly of the beast and him de get sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into this hole with this threat of jadis and then thorn yeah and as then soon as he got back Soon as he got back, the shit started to hit the fan, and it was just like, "Oh, this is not gonna be just us, just you know, running off together." There's, there's a lot to deal and with, and it here. just proved like the higher that you go into the CRM, the harder and harder it is to get out. Um, and then of course ending with that cliffhanger of her eating his ass out of that damn helicopter God, so after he told her that the things were broken. I mean, how dare you? <laughs> it was so good, so good. My number four is number six. I think, like Kenya said, it was. There were so many really fucking amazing parts um, to that episode. Them making love like grown Romeo and Juliet Ooh. who ha happened to survive Ooh. in the end and him slipping the ring on in Minstrel. Oh, and Rick them Rouse. plotting on the CRM together naked as fuck. That just was so chilling, great. looking beautiful. beautiful. And and being like, are we crazy? Were we born like this? Yes, the fuck. Certifiable. Oh, the fuck? Yeah. Wow. Rick <laughs> killing Bill with his own damn sword. Through the hand. That look Hello. on his face. Oh my god. <laughs> like, murder coat Rick. That's murdering that. Rick Grimes right there. You might as well have had his murder coat on. Let's let's talk about it, people. Ooh. But then there were also the the parts of it that I wish there were more. Like I wish that we have I know that there was a writer strike and you know there's just certain yeah. things that, that couldn't be done. Yeah. But I really super duper duper wish um, that we could have at least seen a little bit of a glimpse of what Judith and RSJ's life was like, and a little bit more of a glimpse of what the restoration of the civic republic or, you know, this, this new rousing version. sort mm -hmm. of new ground that they have to cover now that they've discovered all this corruption and this terrible fucking genocidal plot by the CRM. Yeah. Um, and again, more like this was the, the episode that utilized General Beale more than any other episode. Um, so I can't really fault that, but I do wish there was a little bit more of a build up of his character, made him a little bit more sinister prior to the episode. Maybe mm -hmm. my number five is episode two. I love Deny, I love the character of Nat. I think that it was just very effective, it, it really showed her story. It really passed on some ideals from Nat, you know, the, the you gotta know when to go, um, burning versus build, building, you know, that kind of thing, his genius that helped them with the final plan, um, but just stacked up against all the other episodes. My last was episode five, just because of, you know, all the things that Kenya w was talking about, the us wanting to see a little bit more of Jadis' journey and wanting just a little bit more attention. Maybe we could have spent a little less time on the, the hillbilly family that they came across with the noodles. Mm -hmm. That was cute and everything, but yeah. Yeah, so that's the ranking. Favorite 
goddamn motherfucking scenes. There's so many to choose from. We're gonna do three each. There's way too many to choose from, so we just stick to three. My favorite scene, just because it's so fu fucking fresh in my memory, is Rick killing General Bill. Well, I see why you picked that one. I, I, I definitely see Which why one you did you that. pick? I'm gonna tell you in a minute. Y'all already know probably, okay. but yeah. I see why you picked that though. That was murder code, Rick. That was, we didn't want to waste the bullets. I made you a promise, Rick. Woo! Okay, that Woo! was motherfucking hatchet to the head, Rick. That was biting niggas' throat That, out, that Rick. was anybody you get in the way of that's gonna lose, Rick. That was anybody who gets in the way of that is gonna motherfucking lose. Ooh. He said, we're not dead, bitch. You are. Ram. <laughs> okay. Catch this motherfucking sword through your hand. Um, that was so good. And the look on his face, like I said, Andrew Lincoln, he knows Andrew what Lincoln. to do. He yes, knows he what does. to give us. He knows exactly what we want. And he gives it to us every motherfucking time. And then of course, I know that, that they gave us a plenty. They certainly did in terms of the kissing and oh, all yeah. of that. So many kisses. Um, and I know you have a different scene in mind, but my favorite scene was in episode four. The love scene between them when they lead got back to the from, yeah, she was, whew, from spicy. The, well, that's what I'm saying. Like that whole lead up when they got back to him, you know, him wanting to touch her and just just physically connect with her after all that turmoil and surviving yeah. the, all those walkers. To him, you know, being so overwhelmed with those feelings rushing back again um, and ramming against his trauma pretty much that he has a panic attack basically, you know, while they're making love and her. Just being there for him until it passes and actually helping it to pass. And then her being like, yo, bro, nah, -uh, we're not going nowhere. You gonna tell me what the fuck is going on to me. And him breaking down and being like, yo, man, they they, they, they fucked me up so bad that I, I all I, I had were my son. dreams and I forgot my son. The beautiful. Oh my God, so beautiful. Oh, the acting, the acting. I love it. I can't be without you. I die without you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, the, the you're hurting me. That's not how you love. Oh, whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa. my heart ripped itself out oh. of my chest, and walked out the door. <laughs> In the same episode, when they discover that body, and like I think it's a gym. In that building and they have that really tense intense fight like the fight you know beforehand in the apartment was tense but this one really got to the nitty gritty meat yeah, yeah. um when when michonne was basically just like pouring her heart out to him which she hasn't really done when she said you know you you you've shown us me a side of myself that i don't like i, I believe she her. was desperate and she actually got desperate and he gave her nothing. Yeah. And that was just some really good fucking acting. Yeah. From was. from Deny, but also from Andrew. If you really just look at what he's doing yeah. against what she's doing. Oh. That's a man that's shut down that has already killed himself, that doesn't want to come back to life again. Her him telling her you know, all these things I've done to keep you alive and safe, that's not me. And then her going like, the only time I feel safe is when I'm with you. Like Michonne has never said something like that. Has never admitted to being vulnerable like that. The only time that she has is when they were on those train tracks and she basically was like, you know, he was like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm yeah. okay because you're okay. When, when he said what he said to her about, you shouldn't have come here. And then she shoved him and the look on his face. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look, I love all the things that she picked. You know, if, if we weren't going to make this list longer, I would have picked all those things too. However, my number one, which I said, I think is all we're shown her's number one is an episode six, the top of the episode. When we zoom in to push into while he's rich and in girl, lover boy grimes Ooh. with the candles lit, the gear, the murder weapons laid out. <laughs> He's digging in. He pauses to pick up this wedding ring, this, this ring that is a symbol of his love for his love. He slides that ring on her finger. The look on his face, Andrew Lincoln knows what to do with his fucking face. Oh my God, yeah, that look. And then he looks at her 
and continues. Oh my God, looking her in the eyes, bitch. And the look on her face. And she was like, oh, she was like, oh my God. And I was just like, I was like, oh my God. Because I wish they hadn't cut the black, faded to black. I oh wish God, they had let us see. That was a good kiss. If I had to show anybody, somebody asked me who's Rashawn, what's Rashawn, I would show them that scene. My number two pick is the reunion that from episode two. This, just the way they played it, the atmosphere, the cinematography, the, the setting. She says, no, he gets up off of his knees because he cannot believe that she's standing in front of him. And she just embraces him. She touches his face. She moves his hair back. And he just holds his head down and goes into her neck. And she says, I found you. I lost it. I lost my mind. I didn't think that they were going to do that in the episode one. And when they did do it again in the episode two, I didn't think they were going to be go beyond that point where they see each other. And I'm so glad that they did. Yeah. And the circumstances of them, after both giving up on their, him giving up on his life, trying to escape, and her giving up on trying to find him, and then to just happen upon each other. Fate. Where she could have killed him. The lovers. The and he was lovers. ready to die. He was re oh my God, he was. The fact that she was the one who did that and he was the one in that helicopter and they found each other in that way, so were shown. <laughs> like, that is her showing up to the fence with that? baby formula and him finally embracing his daughter and giving up on seeing his dead wife. Right when she comes that's, to the date with baby shown. formula. The family reunion at the end of episode six. So I do think that if they had given episode six another 15 minutes to make it a true 60 minute episode because it was like 45 minutes, then then that scene could have had more depth to it. However, I know there was a writer strike and an actor strike and, and it was just past the pandemic and all of that. So it, it was just like they they did what they could with what they had it played out really well. I, I loved Rick's his anxiety over coming back to his children after all this time. I love the fact that they ran to her first because that's who they know. That's their mother who's been taking care of them and who they miss. Like uh, when we last left Judy, she was starting to forget Rick's voice and RJ's oh never God. met his father. Yeah. So he only knows him as this myth, this legend, the brave man. And Rick doesn't know them anymore. He doesn't know Judith anymore. When he saw her last, she was a toddler, barely a to a walking baby. So, and and the casting, perfect. She looks so much like Lori and Shane. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. And that little boy looks just like Andrew Lincoln. So for me, that was the perfect way to end that episode. I'm so glad they did that because I would have just. If, if it hadn't happened that way, I wouldn't have been satisfied with the ending. There were a couple of misses for both of us. I think, like we said, the show was almost perfect, <clears throat> not quite perfect. And that's to be expected because nothing will ever be perfect. No. And definitely, you can't achieve perfection for everybody. <laughs> so everybody's going to have their something. And uh, there's things that people are calling out, and some of those things I can agree with. Other things, I'm just like, whatever. It's a TV show, first and foremost. It's a TV show. You have to suspend your disbelief. A and little bit. Just a little bit. Come on, bro. Because this is six episodes and not 16, as you would normally get in a regular Walking Dead season, yeah. you, you have to cut corners. You have to magic some things. Not even cut things. corners. It's just that you have to be way more succinct you have to be way more efficient frankly yeah. with your storytelling mm -hmm. and you and the pacing just it has to yeah. match up to the the limits of the episode arc like, and sometimes it. that means you have to pull out a few unicorns like that like yeah like for for either or scenario but mostly hey let's make it so that we don't have to tell yeah. the story again if we don't get to yeah all of this is being pulled from the series proper it's all coming from the source. Um, all of these things are who these people oh, would be callbacks, man. and what they would say having gone through what they went through. 
Thank you. It, why Why would Rick and Michonne remain the same goddamn people? It's TV, but they are meant to be human. They have to evolve based on what happens to yes. them and what they go through. They, they, they speechify at each other. That's what they do. That's, That's what, what they've, they've always been done. Doing. The Rick Tatership speech. All you got to do is go back through. Sorry, I'm getting hyped. And watch how they talk to each other. Michonne has always been his cheerleader and she's always pulled him from the brink and, and bigged him up and let him know, you got this, man. You can do this. I believe in we you. We got this. Together, exactly. we got this. There's so many callbacks. But but the point of this is to talk about what the quote unquote big misses are. If this had been a longer season, I definitely wouldn't have wanted them to quickly kill off so many amazing side characters. And making us care about Nat and Okafor especially, but intrigued by Thorne and Bill. And then they are literally and figuratively secondary characters that are meant to push Rick and Michonne to, to where they need to be in the narrative. Okay? Very well written devices. They are Very so well, well performed. And so well performed. It's not a miss per se because it it had to work the way it did in order for us to get this amazing season of just six episodes. But if it had been longer, I would have wanted to spend more time with these characters and really dig into how and why they are what they are to Rick and Michonne. I, I've already talked about this, but I wanted another 15 minutes for episode six. I feel like you're gonna go out, you need to go out with a bang. Not to say that they didn't go out with a bang because they did, but I think it could have been a bigger bang. We get this broadcast that we're listening to while they're flying back home that lets us know sort of everything that happened in the interim between that and them getting home. And it's like, it seems like they spent a little bit more time doing what they said they were going to do, which is informing the Civic Republic about what the military was yeah, doing. Right. And then all of these sort of changes that they needed to, you know, implement and get going. And when they get off the helicopter, uh, Michonne has her katana. So, and she's in these fancy clothes. So it looks like they spent some time in the Civic Republic. But then they couldn't have written that. Or hire the actors. That's what I, I, I absolutely, I totally to understand that, that the circumstances around filming and production, they needed to, to do it yeah. this way. I totally get that. In a perfect, quote unquote, perfect world, another 15 minutes for episode six would have been really great. And the last thing is, um, I did want them to talk about all the things that happened to them like they did do a lot of that in episode four but there's so much more i'm sure that they did this off screen you know probably while they're on their road trip back before jadis found them but like rick and the letters everything that he went through the things he said he was he couldn't talk about the rebar when they're in that gym oh, right. and they see did that, did he ever tell like, her I would, I would about have, how, like, how he how ended up on die? the bridge? John, how but did you end I up on the him, bridge? I would have wanted her to ask him, why, why did you blow the bridge? And he could have explained about, you know, really not wanting that walk to make it to Like he basically they committed. just recovered that place. I don't think he would have survived in Alexandria because there was no, I mean, they had Sadiq, but I don't, I think his wound was so great that he needed a surgical team. And, and so Jadis did actually save his life, even though she kidnapped him. But Michonne doesn't know. Or, well, we assume that she doesn't because we didn't see. We didn't see, see it. I would have wanted that to be a part of the angst and the conversation, the argument between them in episode four. Um, but I'm not mad that it wasn't there, but it's something that I would have liked to see. Like I said before, I don't think they used General Beale enough. I think, he, you know, like only, only six episodes, but it would have been interesting to at least, even if he was like, okay, so he sat on a bench with Rick, but what was his relationship with Okafor actually like? Like what was yeah. the dynamic actually like? And why did he, why did he, why did he, he suspect him? Why did Okafor right. to save Rick's life? Which is one of the reasons why I believe what your th theory is, is that Beale is a total B. Oh yeah. He's a B collecting other Bs so that he can rule the world. Right, and so that just kind of bugged me a little bit throughout. Like, I just, I wanted to see a little bit more. Like, we only saw Oka for dealing with Rick and Thorn, mm -hmm. And it was a kind of a mystery to me as to why he was able to convince them, frankly, to spare Rick's life, especially because he is such an A. <laughs> you know, why, why, how, how did he get, how did he convince them to do that? 
you know, Beale sort of like hinted at it at the end when he was saying like, of all the 2000 people that I've given this briefing to, you're the only one who could leave the CRM one day. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, that gives us a glimpse into his mindset, but I think I would have preferred it if they had laced a little bit, put a little bit, of, a few more breadcrumbs. Yeah. You know? Nobody really questioned, I mean, like, I'm sure he got debriefed and questioned and everything like that, but it, it was just a sort of like, oh, well, you're back. Let's give you this Because he this wanted Rick briefing. to come back because he wanted Rick to leave. And in his mind, Rick coming back means, oh, we got him. Okay. We successfully indoctrinated him. We successfully convinced him that this is the way. So now he's ready for the briefing. Right. And that's probably why also he didn't waste any time before they had the bigger right. meeting and gave marching orders for the march. He probably actually probably was going to ask Rick to, to lead the march. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that. Or help him lead the march. People were like, oh, you know, he beat, he beat him so easily. I'm like, this is an old man. And Rick is a true alpha. He's a true, he's a true A, a true leader. Did you yeah, hear he him say that he used his teeth to kill a man? Yeah, no. Bill is no match for Rick. Did Marsh. you not watch him spend two years going through military training in the CRM? Did you not see this man survive chopping off his own fucking hands? Bill didn't even kill walkers. The fuck out of here! He's not been out there in the wild, starving to death, He's fighting for his fucking life crumpets. against cannibals and Sit megalomaniacs. No. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Rick walked that ass just like Rick was going to walk that ass because Rick is Rick motherfucking Ricky Dicky Doo Die Grimes. Come on, y'all. They, they on. were showing us those flashbacks. They wanted Bill to be another Negan so bad. I just don't. I, I, I don't get that. Yeah, well, Rick sliced Negan's throat. Anyway, if the, this isn't huge, but I do very much lament that they didn't even mention our Andre. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I already have a huge problem with the way that people talk about and treat RJ. RJ. Yeah. Or like, I think people's negativity about that kid is just way too much. It's, it's ridiculous. Y'all are doing the most. But not mentioning Michonne's first son, first son Andre, yeah. I feel like was also. And and did, I, I cannot remember, but did she ever actually tell Rick about Andre? She only mentioned, as far as we have seen on screen, she only kind of like kind of vaguely mentioned that she had gone through she she went through what he went through before when right after they lost Carl maybe, maybe they have had that talk and maybe that talk is just not it's just not something that was a priority for this only six episode series but it was something that I was thinking about Rick wrote those letters he burned those letters um, and he always said though that he thought he might have told her those stories on the porch one day we didn't make it to the porch but no. I kind of, like, we did have a whole honeymoon episode. So if we're going to spend time giving, you know, dudes noodles in the woods, maybe we could have spent a little <laughs> bit of time talking about, you know, those letters and what he had to do to survive, which was write to her and talk to her and dream about her. They, people were saying that there, weren't a, there weren't, wasn't enough um, walkers or anything like that. And I just wanted to say that's ridiculous. There were five miles There were walkers. walkers in every single episode. And not only were they present, um, people were fighting walkers in every episode. There was usually a scenario where they there had to get themselves around. out of a situation. And then there were new types of walkers. Like they spent time introducing the geyser hardened you know, that they had to break the shell and then the ones that they squished with the cars because they were so soft. Like, they introduced walkers in every episode. I feel like that's just some way for people to be mad about the fact that as Gimple and Denai and Andy have said from the top to the bottom, this is a love story. It's a love story. It's a love story. That's a great transition. The promise of the motherfucking premise from the beginning from the earliest interviews that we can remember between anybody and Scott Gimple or Deny or Andrew Lincoln this story is and was and is always meant to be a love story, a love story about Rick and Michelle and I wish that people would just absorb that and accept that and stop trying to make it what it was never meant to be they, they just want Rick Grimes to be 
chopping walkers and kicking ass and yeah. taking names. And they wanted another Negan saga. <sighs> Rick's journey has always included love. The man fell to his knees and cried like a baby because he couldn't find his wife and his son the very first fucking episode. What do you think drove him to do that? And he told Merle on that rooftop, all I am is a man looking for his wife and his son. Anybody who gets in the way of that is gonna lose. That's who he is. Love that conquers all is the overarching theme of Rick Grimes' story of the ones who live. There could never be any other story about where is Rick Grimes without it being Rick Grimes is trying to get his ass back to his motherfucking family, back to the woman that he wanted to make a child with and ask Gabriel to to, to marry him and her on the fucking the bridge, bridge that he, that he killed building. himself on. Yeah, like, and people bringing in Negan, like Daryl, okay, that's his brother, but there's no, there's no where on earth where you, where Rick Grimes is gonna give a shit about the man who bludgeoned two members of his family in front of him and almost and made him, almost chop off made his him sons or was gonna kill hands. his son in front of him. Why would he give a fuck about Negan? Like, Why? please, which he come hasn't on, y'all. seen this man since he was in a jail to cell call the it, day that he fell on some fucking rebar. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we're getting off topic. What what were we talking about? Oh yeah, so the promise of the premise, girl. That was the promise of the premise. Just just they delivered what they promised. There were a lot of people speculating that one of uh, one of them was gonna die, or both of them was gonna die, and, and, and the show the show's called, called the, the ones, ones who live. live. Which is what Michonne has been saying to Rick since well, actually Rick said it first, and then she repeated it back to him when they were finally like getting on the same mantra. page about yeah. the, the, the savior. She said it every time. It changed from we're the walking dead to, to the ones no, who live. bitch, we're the ones who live. And that's the whole thing about love and what Rashawn brings to Rick's life, what she always has. It's not enough to survive. You have to have something to live for. Yeah. You have to have something to live for. Yeah. Herschel was trying. To, to show him that before Herschel got killed. Glenn! Glenn wanted to fight for something to live for, for yep. a place to be, for life to, 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 to be real and, life And I again. would argue that he gave Rick the example that you could be, you could fall in love, you can get married, you can have children again. Like, this mm -hmm. killing and surviving is not all that we... Right, yeah. so why why do y'all want this show to only be about killing and surviving and to only have turmoil and like, what is so wrong with having yeah. love, love throughout all of this bullshit? Like, y'all, and y'all keep saying it's unrealistic, and I think that's sad. That's really sad. This is, this is fan service done right. It served the story rather than detracted from it. And it wasn't, it, it made sense for these two characters. It was something that Scott Gimple had been developing between these two characters since this season three. Season three. He, he came to Kirby and said, hey, what do you think about Rick and Michonne? So yeah, that was in the cards. And when you listen to them talk about these characters, Scott Gimple is a huge fan of Andy, Denai, and Michonne, and Rick, and a huge fan of their love story. And he made some mistakes, which I don't really blame him I don't blame him for Carl. I feel like he was the writer and the showrunner that executed it, but the executives who didn't want to renew that boy's contract when he turned 18 or 19, um, they're the ones who actually made that decision and he had to carry the decision out. All I'll say just to kind of wrap this up is that it, it's really evident everywhere you look. Everything they've said, all the interviews, if you just read the goddamn interviews, if you just watch the fucking interviews, anything. Yeah, they have so much behind the scenes content. The writing process, the production process, every little decision that they made, the love scene, the panic attack, all of these things that they decided to do, the foundation that they built from it the ground well up. Researched. It, it was well-researched. It was so very well, researched. well thought out. They argued they, about yeah. this shit. They yeah. went rounds and rounds. Like, they I spent two years would, breaking this story, man. Two fucking years. I wish people would just, like, come on. The writing has been on the wall from the beginning. Denai said during interviews when the premiere happened, they needed to fulfill the promise that they put out there to the fans, and I believe that they absolutely did. We're shown. We're shown. This is a love story, as we said before. It has been a love story from the moment that Rick Grimes 
strolled up to that gate and stared at this woman covered in blood with baby formula and a katana still alive staring at him not even flinching that she was surrounded by walkers they have said in interviews countless times it felt like they were the only two people on the scene the chemistry between them has been off the chain since day one what i find so amazing about this story is how they've leaned into the love rather than shied away from it it is Probably one of the only things about The Walking Dead that isn't all doom and gloom and yeah, through all of that shit, these two people found each other. They're not just these two people, they're two extraordinary people. They really are. True leaders. Yeah. He, she makes him better. Like, I'm sorry. She totally does. But, and, and, and let's really talk about this. Now, I first off, I gotta say this. I am not a Lori Grimes hater. I do not hate Lori Grimes. I am all about the facts uh, as they were written and presented to me. And the way they wrote her character, she, from, I'm talking about before the apocalypse, before this man woke up in the middle of zombies eating people, he wasn't the they best were already starting to fracture apart. I'm not saying that she's a terrible person. I'm saying she wasn't right for Rick. She wasn't Rick's soulmate. She wasn't the love of Rick's life. She was the mother of Carl and his first love, but she was not the end all be all. All right? In contrast, Michonne, she came in and she was for Rick what he needed he needed somebody to, to talk to. He needed somebody to share burden. the burden. He needed somebody to lead with. He needed somebody that was going to big him up and lift him up when he started to feel like everything was going wrong instead of blaming him, instead of looking at him sideways, instead of telling him to do something. And then when he does it, looking at him like he's a monster, Lori, I'm sorry. I'm the, these are the facts. The facts are the facts. <laughs> All right. So, so why be surprised when he says that she's the love of his life and that he can't live without her? His heart beat for his son Carl, and then I'm sorry, he fell in love with Michonne, and that meant that his heart beat for her, especially after he lost his son. Uh -huh. Michonne, Judith, and now RJ became, you know what drives Rick Grimes. Oh, he thanks. said in the little gift shop that he was in love with his son's best friend. I mean, come on, that is confirmation right there. He always had feelings for her. Always. He always had feelings with her and those feelings developed into love. And when they sat down on that couch and shared those mints, he was already in love with her and yeah. they just confirmed it. So like, I don't know what y'all talking about came out of nowhere. They've yeah. been lacing the shit since she got on the damn show. Yes, and also the argument that his being so in love with her makes him weak. I mean, clearly not. Cause he's clearly still, not. he's still capable of, of killing, okay? He, he, Rick Grimes never wanted to be a killer. And he never wanted to be this dictator. Like even talking to Michonne, he always said to her, she she was like, you could you could do this, you could lead. And he was like, I don't really want to, but I'll do this with you. He always wanted to be her husband. He always wanted her to be his wife. He was always thinking of her, the giving cat, her things, the deer. gifting things to her, letting her know how much he cared about her, how much she meant to him. So this has always been who he was as a person. He wasn't that way with Lori she because he couldn't be. She, she did not bring that out, out of him. him. All she did was stress him out and try to force him yeah. to be a certain way. Yeah. And it just it just it just didn't work. They just were not compatible as husband and wife. And that does not make Lori a bad person. It just it does not make her a compatible wife. She just wasn't right for it. One thing I definitely want to bring up is this criticism that it's, it shouldn't be as quote unquote easy for them to have done what they did, especially taking down the CRM. Yeah. And it just really baffles me that it's like that they, they laid those foundations and those seeds, not only throughout this season, but throughout the entire fucking series. Yeah. Okay. Let's be serious for a second. Have you been watching them? Have you seen everything that they've done? Have you seen that? They've done did this you, shit a million did times. Did you hear Bill say that he thinks Rick? could leave the CRM. That means 
they wanted to believe in Rick. They yeah. wanted to give him free reign because Beale wanted him to lead and wanted him to be on their side. He was yeah, ready man. to believe there that There have Rick never been anybody was... like him. Exactly. Rick Grimes has been a, a charismatic leader type since he stepped on the motherfucking scene. Sure, he had to learn lessons from Shane and from Herschel and from all those other people, but he made it here for a reason. Michonne even told him, you could be a leader. And all he ever said was, well, I don't really want that, but I, I could and you. would with yeah. you. She makes him stronger, not weak. So, like, why why wouldn't the two of them, which Jada said repeatedly, could do anything, anything, when they're together, why wouldn't they be able to take down the CRM when the CRM is arrogant enough to have every single one of their higher upper echelon members in one place at one time. When the CRM was is arrogant enough to let an A like Rick move up the ranks and make it to the desk to the escalon briefing. When the CRM okay was nothing but a bunch of damn bees was nothing but a bunch of bees in the first damn place. Why oh why oh why don't you think that Rick Grimes and Michonne Grimes to take them out. I, I don't get it. He was an ex-cop who made it all the way to the deputy sheriff position. They trained him. He was him trained. By the CRM. He was trained by the CRM. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. He has the tactical mind. He has the He's physical a good ability. Mind. This man plotted to escape the Civic Republic. He escaped... Time he <laughs> and he planned all of that and applauded Michonne's fucking escape. Come on, are man. you? Come on, come on. Come like, on. Yeah, he could take down the civic he could republic. Take down the civic republic. Military, especially by now that he has Michonne. Yes, back. especially yes. now that she has yeah. broken him of his fucking Stockholm syndrome. Hell yeah, the two of them. Yes, do it. was there TV magic? Yes, there was. But they spent the whole season and that episode giving you flashback after flashback after flashback, letting you know how, how capable, capable these two are. Yep. So, I mean, I think it's kind of arbitrary to say something like predictions because as far as we know, this That's is it. the end of the Rick and Michonne story. Um, before the last episode, I had been sort of thinking... There's no way they're going to get all this done and there's got to be a season two. The way they ended this this last episode, there, there doesn't need to be a season two. There could be one, but there doesn't need to be. I personally think probably what's going to happen is there's going to be some sort of cameo or call back or, or mention or something in the second season of Daryl Dixon. Probably either when Carol finds Daryl I feel like she may have been there when Rick and Michonne made it home or when Carol and Daryl get back home. So they're that. And then if they want to do like Gimple sort of hinted at this sort of MCU, yeah. you know, Avengers crossover. Um, I feel like what they'll do is a, is a two hour TV movie epic. I feel like that's what they, they're probably going to do. I don't think there's going to be a 12th season of The Walking Dead. I And I don't think they'll make it a second season of The Ones Who Live. I think it'll just be a big TV movie on AMC with good The Ones Who Live film quality. Um, and all of their characters will come back into the fray. I actually think... In part, yes, a big TV event, but I think it actually might be a small miniseries. I think they might actually make episodes for a big crossover, okay. and they might call it something original. They could continue it after the Walker situation has been... They will, because you know Gimple said that there's infinite amount of stories that he wants to tell in this universe. So I'm, they, they are going, whether or not Rick and Michonne are going to be involved, I feel like the way to hook Deny is to keep her on the creative production side of things. And the way to hook Andy is to hook Deny. So, <laughs> so that would be my prediction that it's a, a limited series. Um, with maybe even fewer episodes than six, but at least six episodes where all of the characters come together 
all the storylines kind of come together and they have like their final phase in the original series story arc before they move on to something else. All I can say is, wow, a near perfect season of television. I'm going to be ranking the ones who live a nine and a half out of ten. Let's talk about it. Wow, you guys, like this has been, like I said, an amazing journey. So good. I've never been, I, it's been a, a while, a minute since I've been hooked on something. Like I was hooked on these six episodes for the yeah, last few weeks. I think Loki was the last Loki. Thing. Yeah, it's and it's gotten me to go back and rewatch The Walking Dead and rediscover how much I love that show. Like I stopped watching Which I'm after gonna season do seven for the channel. I think <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna react to um, Dead City, but I just have such oof, my feelings about it. But anyway, so overall season review, I just think that this thing was so damn near close to perfect that it's not even pretty good. Loki season two was probably the last thing that made us so goddamn hype and was so well crafted. And it is absolutely because of the people who are involved. You got Scott Gimple, who is someone who's been crafting this show and so passionate about the show, you know, whatever you think about. He's made some mistakes. Thing, things that he's done in the past. You can tell how much he loves that he had Andy this and world, and then Andrew, who is the the the, the goat, the, the dude. He's the man. He's the fucking man. He is the Love face of the down. show, the heart of the show. He is the show. To have him on board and and producing and having input, and then having Deny, who not only is also the other half of the heart of the show, but she is so goddamn. She's so good at what she does. Ooh wee! So good. That's who you want. That's who you want. That's who you want on your motherfucking team. That's who you want in charge of your show. Awards, bitch. I, I want him to be recognized. Across the board. I want Denai to be recognized. It was a damn near perfect season of television. Nine and a half out of ten. I'm gonna say nine out of ten. We didn't even talk about like the music, the cinematography. Oh god, the music was so like, good. The, the tightness of the scripts, the pacing, like everything Gross. just was so good. So thank you, AMC, for the giving budget, them the budget. Budgeting. This is a rewatch, definitely. Oh, I, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna rewatch the fuck oh, out I'm of this. Rewatching this. I've already. There are so many black women out there with podcasts now. Thank y'all for getting up out there and, and creating content. It's uh, that is going to do it for this amazing series or season, I guess, the season of television. Yeah. The Ones Who Live. Oh my God, it was so awesome. So, um, yeah, so that was number one on my watch list. This shit brought me back to YouTube and I'm so very happy. Thank you, Kenya, for joining me. Yeah, all right. Yay, mommy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> stick around. There's going to be more coming soon. Like and subscribe and peace. Bye. Thank you.